The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 5th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. And if you've got a question but you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send it off early if you would to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a mixed bag. That seems to be the soup du jour. Dow's down one point, so that's flat. S&P's not flat. It's up 11. NASDAQ 100 up 117, 6 tenths percent. Russell's down 9. Semis are off 4. Trannies are down 121. New York Stock Exchange off 33 points. Goldilocks is up 20 bucks. Silver's up 38 cents. Light three crude up 45 pennies. Natural gas trading down a nickel. And the 30-year Treasury printed out at 118.20. That's up 20 ticks. The leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Bank of Monte Montreal up nearly 20 bucks or 3.7 percent. Meta Platforms right behind it, 18 dollars and change, 3.6 percent. Netflix up 12.52 percent. Eli Lilly up 12 bucks, 1.3 percent. And the uh, and cost goes up 11 bucks as well, almost 11 bucks, one and a quarter percent there. Our shakers to the downside, Micro Strategy up 45 bucks, 3 percent. United Rentals 17 bucks, 3 percent. Broadcom 18 bucks, 1 percent. Super Micro 10 bucks, one and a quarter percent. HCA Healthcare is down uh, eight bucks. That's nearly two and a half percent move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. I hope everybody had a, a fantastic a 4th of July celebration, a safe one out there. I thought the uh, fireworks display, I, we've got some of them right outside our front door. They've been doing them here in Delray Beach for 50 years. I think Macy, not for 50 years, but still, Macy puts usually puts on the best, in my opinion, the best fireworks display. I thought this year was better than any other prior year that I've seen out there, and the music, I thought, was uh, better better handled. So, in any event, that's what, that was Stevie saying, I love fireworks. Um, you know, they, man, they had some pretty cool ones. I'd love to shoot one of those off of my back dock. In any event, you didn't call, you didn't, you're not tuning in to get a, a fireworks update unless there were fireworks in the markets out there. So let's go take a look what the markets are doing. Let's uh, start by taking a look at the, uh, well, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator. Guess what happened on Friday? It closed above that threshold zero level out there. We're still trading above it. The reading is 1833, 18 something and change out there. That's really panel number two from the bottom of my screen. Now, folks, Folks, if we get a second consecutive close above the zero threshold level, it's a pretty good indication that buyers are the ones that are taking control. I know I could have fooled you with regard to buyers taking control uh, because price has been below uh, the uh, threshold. But you can see the New York Stock Exchange has really just been trading a sideways uh, move out there. So uh, watch that uh, indicator, I guess, tune back in on uh, Monday. Uh, many of you don't have that uh, tool on your systems out there. But what price has done is closed above, it's still trading above, and that is a bullish signal for the general market. So if we take a look at spot volatilities, it is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is currently printed at 1302. We're trading at 1229 out there. So likely the S&P 500 is going to go ahead, or the ES Mini, I should say, in this case here, is going to go ahead and complete its one, at least its one-to-one -one price projection of its A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. 5678 is that price target out there. What else do we want to look at here? 
Hmm. I would have to say not much. So let's go ahead and let's switch screens. Let's go over to those white background screens. Let's take a look at the equity future contracts. All of them, all four of them. See what kind of signals they're providing to you and I. That's Lightspeed Crew. We'll come back to that um, a little bit later in the show. But first, let's start off with the uh, daily equity future contracts out here. There we go. So we take a look at the ES mini. In fact, I'll blow it up out here. I'll take it uh, a little bit wider. We'll get rid of that 5561. That was the TD9 count top. Uh, price right now is uh, dealing with its road. Did it close above that? Yeah, it did. So it negated its uh, roads momentum indicator top. It's wave number C pattern out there. Just about everything. So uh, what does this suggest? We took a look at that A to B equals CD pattern. I have that drawn in here. But that A to B equals CD pattern, the initial price projection of its one-to-one -one move would take us up to 56.7850. I don't see any other kind of topping signal. Now, there's a roads momentum indicator pattern that's been that's uh, that has that still remains out there however that requires at a minimum that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm some type of top what do you mean minimum stevie well you can form a bull bearish reversal candle but if we're not trading below that green oscillator and change line the signal is what i'll call suspect out there so it uh, looks like the es mini is suggesting to you and i it wants to continue to rally if we take a look at the nq out here that'll be the next one up on our screen let's go ahead and also get rid of its prior uh, signal signals it's a uh, roads it's td9 count pattern out here and uh, this also like the es mini is moving higher with less relative energy again that's not a big issue out there now price on friday in essence closed at the one-to-one -one level the one-to-one -one of its a to b equal cd pattern was at the 2413 area the 1.272 expansion where price is headed to is going to be that 2937 level also because it's got that roads momentum indicator signal triggered if a bearish reversal candle were to form that could signal a short-term top or some type of top at this stage here we don't see that at the moment and so it looks like we see a rally continuing now we get down and we start to take a look at the troublesome part of the market the first area is going to be the dow the dow has been unable to take out the sellers the sellers reside at the top of its profile that's at 39.739 it's tried once twice three times four times four times in the last five trading sessions out there and has not been able to take out resistance but at the same time it has not been able to take out support and support here is that green oscillator and chain line. So it's kind of an undecided territory. But what we do know, one thing we could say, is if price were to close above 39.739, it should lead to higher price. The should means, well, look, even though it's not part of the pattern out here, I do see a bearish uh, engulfing candle that sets up a resistance level. So I'd say if price closes above 39.739, price should then go target 39.999. And a close above that, we get up to 44.33. So res resistance has not failed like it has in the ES and the NQ, but support is still holding inside of the Dow. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 as a buy the D point pattern, buy the D point pattern forming out here on June 17th. I don't have that A to B equals CD drawn in there. You guys can do that on your charts if, if you'd like. What we do know is support for that buy the D point pattern is down to 20. 15, 20 out there. This has been oscillating back and forth of its oscillator and change line. In other words, it's really not providing you and I with much of a clear signal out there. So how do we summarize it? The ES Mini to the moon, the NQ right behind it, the Dow uncertain, and the Russell uncertain. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
and over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get into some of the requests that have come in. A couple came in uh, late on Wednesday that we didn't get to, so I want to go ahead and get to those right away. The first uh, first two coming in from Eddie in Boca Raton. Eddie wanted to start off by taking a look at NVIDIA. So we take a look at NVIDIA out here. The, the thing that's most important to take a look at, Eddie, is first going to be the weekly chart. The weekly chart uh, is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count pattern uh, today. The actual high came uh, back uh, two weeks ago with bar number eight out there. Um, it has a roadsman indicator signal, has not triggered that bearish reversal candle. But the most important thing is to know that this week what price did was it got down, touched, and so far rejected that green oscillator and change line. So even though it's trading with inside its profile, by the way, the first level for support, or support, the, so support is that green oscillator and change line. Below that is 114.50. That's on a weekly time frame. If we take a look at where resistance is at, you've got two levels 130.25 and the second level is going to be the high it's all-time high and that's that td9 count top that being 140.76 out there so what's the signal here it's neutral on the weekly time frame you've got a wave number seven pattern on the uh, daily time frame and on wednesday price got back inside its profile so where the resistance levels are here, and we're going to consider that daily to kind of be the intermediate term time frame, is at 129.75. At 131 is another level of resistance, the oscillator and change line. Then you've got 134.15. Then you've got the all-time high, which we took a look at on that weekly time frame chart. So at this stage here, I'm going to go with now the monthly at the end of the month should form bar number nine. That says you could get a top between this month or maybe it was last month, if you will, and uh, next month out there. But still, price is traded on the monthly time frame above its green asset and change line above profile level so i don't see any significant problem on the monthly time frame so it's really going to be about the daily the weekly has already done its work it found support and so now we got to watch those battles 129.75 130.25 134.15 so eddie thanks for waiting a uh, week on that one but let's go take a look at the uh, next request which was a take a look at dell d double d e double l we take a look at dell Dell is doing what? Well, it has a confirmed Roachman to indicator top when it gapped down on the trade day of May 31st. Came all the way back towards the uh, breakout level, 124.25. It got down to a low of 127.59. Now, do I see a bottom here? No. Um, 
not yet at least. You could get a bottom if price closed above 149.04 for two consecutive sessions, Eddie. If that were to happen, then we would have a profile change in trend. But on Wednesday, where price found resistance was the top of that profile, that's at 149.04. They've made it clear to you that that's where the buyers are standing. Where are the sellers standing? Well, the sellers are standing at 133.71. What would happen if price closed below that? It opens up the door to get back to that prior swing point or maybe get back to that breakout level, 124.25. So we still have a top in place with the consolidation with inside a profile. There's not much more I can add to it for the daily time frame. On a weekly time frame, Dell has a Roadsman to indicator top. Really kind of the same setup in that price is consolidating with inside its profile. Now, when we see where, why did price find support where it did back on bar number six here on the trading day of June 7th? Turns out the answer to that question was price got right back into the buy zone of its bullish structured profile. Yes, I said it has a Roadsman to indicator top. Now what our uh, role is, is to figure out where support is and how is price handling itself at those support levels. The buy my zone inside of Dell on an intermediate or weekly time frame is between 120.80 and 127.34. And finally, when we take a look at the monthly time frame out there, uh, it looks bullish as can be. I do see a wave number seven top that's out there. Price remains above its oscillator and change line above profile. So monthly looks bullish. Weekly is is um, still still bearish, so to speak, with a consolidation that's going on. And I would say the same thing inside of the daily time frame chart. So thank you for waiting an extra day for the review of Dell and uh, NVIDIA and hope you had a, a fantastic uh, 4th of July celebration. Our next question, this also came in on uh, Wednesday and it's from Marvin. And Marvin wanted to take a look at Aspen. ASPN is a ticker symbol. Actually, I don't remember what it is out there. It just looks like Aspen. Looks like it should be Aspen, but it probably isn't Aspen. But uh, oh, it is Aspen Aerogels out there. So how about that? Stevie got something right. Alright, so if you take a look at the daily time frame, Marvin, this formed a TD9 count bottom about five days ago. It was bar number eight of the count out there that was in the trading session of June 28th at the end of the month. What transpired a couple of days ago on July 2nd was a new profile. And that new profile has support at 2367. The actual low of today has been 2368. So you got Aspen, it's got a bottom pattern. If you're looking to get into Aspen, I'd say go ahead and fire away now. You close out that trade with a close blow bar number eight. So the reward risk doesn't get too much better than that, at least on the daily time frame. Now, you've got a resistance level. There was a new profile that formed on Wednesday as well. It is bearish in structure. What that means, Marvin, is you've got a sell zone. And that sell zone is between 2529 and 2610. You clear 2610, you're headed up to 2830. 2830, Stevie, where'd you come up with that? Well, I look at the weekly time frame chart, which I do not see a topping pattern. I just see a consolidation with inside its profile levels, the bottom of which is 2213. Well, last week, price basically got down towards that level. It found support while the daily was making that TD9 count bottom. So this should rally. Just like the daily time frame should rally up to first 2529, the 2668 happens to be that weekly oscillator and change line. So you're going to start finding the battles up top. I have no idea whether uh, Aspen buyers are going to overtake those uh, sellers on those battles, but you've got what you wanted, I think, which was a confirmed daily bottom. You've got uh, no real top inside of the weekly, but price is getting back to the uh, support level out there, and the monthly time frame looks uh, bullish to Stevie. So, Marvin. I hope that helps you out, and uh, as always, thanks so much for your request and, of course, for waiting a couple of days for an answer to your question. G-Man inside the Tiger's Den is not going to have to wait that long. He put in that request at about 20 minutes ago, and that request, two requests, actually. The first one is to take the amazing one, Amazon. So what do we know about it? Now, you're in long calls out here, and what you know about Amazon, or what I know about Amazon, is this formed a, a TD9 count pattern. It completed that pattern on Wednesday. What should transpire, not that it will transpire, what should transpire is a pullback to at least its oscillator and change line. The current print on that is 194.96. Let's just call it 195 at this moment in time. This is also, it appears to have triggered, did it triggered? Nah, we're not going to go there. It's only in wave number five out there, even though it's got a letter G on my system. It's really only in wave number five, at least as, as far as Stevie is concerned. Now, what price is also doing inside of Amazon, it's testing a swing point. That's its TD9 count, bar number nine of the TD9 count, July 2nd. That has volume of 45 million shares. I expect today's trade to be light. Let's go find out. The first two hours, 15 million. So you got 45 million going into, well, 45 million. It's a pretty decent volume out there. 
So I, I don't know that. Look, I don't know that volume is going to keep on like it is out there. But ideally, so you're, you're look, what you would like to see this do is uh, have volume of more than 45 million shares. Why? Because if it closes inside a swing point, even if it's tested the high of that swing point and it does it with the same or more volume out there, odds favor, that would go get retested. We'll take a look at a short term time frame chart, see if there's something there that says something different. The weekly chart is absolutely all out bullish. Uh, why? Because price is trading above profile, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. There's no topping path that's in place out here. The monthly has achieved bar number eight of a TD9 count, but remember, that pattern can complete on bars nine or the bar following that. So it could be two months from now before Amazon generates any kind of significant topping signal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
welcome back, folks. Let's go on to G-Man's next request, which is a take a look at AMD. He's also in the uh, calls here. And G-Man, what you'd love to see today is a close of 169.72. 169.72 is the top of its daily profile. Profile close above that would at least suggest, should suggest, a run for its recent swing high. May 28th out there, 174.55. Volume on that trading day was 67 million shares. So far today, AMD is up with 27. So you've got really good volume there. Wow, that's pretty amazing for a Friday after July 4th that we're seeing some decent volume out here. So I'd stay with the trade. Now, look, if AMD takes out that swing point high, not necessarily today, that uh, swing point that I'm referring to is from May 28th, the one that's got 66 million shares out there. If price closes above 174.55, it's going to trigger a pretty nice A to B equals CD pound on the upside. That's the good news. What's the bad news? I don't really have bad news, but what I... But what, what I do want to share with you is all that looks wonderful, but when we look at the weekly time frame chart, we see that price is, sell, is uh, trading into the sell zone. So maybe clearing that swing point that we just took a look at in the daily time frame is going to be, um, you know, complicated. So 173.42 is that level of the top of that sell zone. The weekly sell zone was between 164.20 and 173.42. Now, the weekly swing point out here has volume. That's the week of May 31st, 200. 33 million shares this week is 162. You need to do the math, add another day, an average day, something like that to try to figure out where we're there. So Amazon, as great as it looks on the daily, that's assuming it can close above 169.72. You've got resistance at the 173.42 level as well. Monthly chart after forming a Rosemont indicator top took price right back to its saucer and change line. That is held over the last four months. So we know that that line is a key area of support out there. Right now, that's printed at 161 and change. So what do you do on the uh, calls out there? Well, I think you got to wait to see how the day plays out. I don't recall when they're dated out there, but just know that you are really running into a resistance level out here. And if you can clear that one, I would say if you really can clear, and I think this is the same number out here, if you can clear the 174.55 level, you should be in really good shape, or AMD should be in really good shape. So, G-Man, I hope that helped you out. And as always, thanks so much for that request out there. Mr. Bill wants to take a look at light Swede crude. His specific question, are there any topping patterns? Now, he didn't say what time frame. Huh. So I probably can find a topping pattern, but I'm guessing that he's really not looking for uh, something that is very, very short term, like a 10 minute chart or 15 minute chart and so forth. So let's take a look at first the monthly time frame and the monthly time frame price has a TD nine count top. This is the August contract and that TD nine count top formed out here in June of 2022. So price is trading into that uh, swing point. If price is able to close above on a monthly basis, 85.84, that will trigger a A to B equals CD pad of the upside. Now, this one is worth taking a look at because this says we've got a hundred plus dollar oil coming at us if we get above that. So let's just simply get a feel for where that potential, we're not there just yet, but let's get a feel for where that potential could take us. So I've got to maneuver the charts here a bit just to be able to uh, do this, put this in here. I guess I could have gone over to the black background charts, but we're like right there. So what, oh, that's over a hundred bucks, yeah. So that gives us a price projection of 111 and change out there. So the first thing, the TD9 count has not been taken out. That's the first thing that needs to happen. If that gets taken out, and by taking out, I mean to close above it, then we've got this $110 oil uh, coming at us. What price is also doing is not only do you have the TD9 count top that's got the resistance. Let's see which one is highest. Well, that's 85.84. And here you've got the swing point from back in April 20. Uh, April 2024 is at 85.27. So it's going to be that TD9. Now that's the Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And I would say if price closed above that, you're clear sailing, but we've got a TD9 count that it's got to deal with. So on the monthly, I hope I'm clear on that. If you're, you're looking for a top, this is trading into prior tops out there. And I have no idea whether it's going to be able to clear those levels. Let's take a look at a shorter term time frame, such as the weekly. What's the weekly communicating to you and I? Turns out that on a weekly basis, it's just simply consolidating with inside its weekly profile. And you've got resistance up at 85.27 out there. Is there anything special 
you know, like church lady special about that? Absolutely not. Just a good old-fashioned consolidation, no kind of topping pattern, just price pulling back and testing support, which on a weekly basis was really down to 74.15, its breakout level. That tested, that held, and now price should go target that 85.27 area. So no weekly uh, top or anything, just a level of resistance. The daily time frame, no top whatsoever. The daily time frame out here, and no A to B equals CD pattern. There's not been enough of retracement anywhere along this move higher. So what the daily time frame is doing, Mr. Bill, it's targeting its uh, TD9 count top as well. It's targeting that TD9 count top, by the way, would be negated with a close above 84.94 out there. Uh, so the daily looks very bullish. Why? Because you're trading above the green oscillator and change line. You are trading above the top of its profile. So daily is very bullish. All that just suggests to Stevie, and I think you, Mr. Bill, is we should see that move up to the top of that weekly profile at 85.27 and challenge those monthly, um, the, the monthly TD9 count patterns out there. Uh, and now when we take a look at the intraday charts, even though I was being, you know, maybe a bit silly out there, uh, I don't see any kind of a topping pattern. The two 40, though, is trading into a TD9 count pattern from 10 o'clock in the morning back on July the 2nd. So if price is able to close above that level, that's 84.38, we're at 84.37 right now. If price is able to close above that level, that just simply adds to the idea that light speed crude should continue to move higher. That's no good. That's man. That says more at the uh, pump. Now, when we take a look at the August contract out here, also, Mr. Ville, what we're going to take a look at is the uh, dance steps out here. We haven't even seen a two-bar retracement since the uh, low that came in back on uh, June the 4th out there. So this is super, super strong, and uh, we'll just have to see where this heads to and whether it takes out those highs. So hope that helps you out with that, and thanks so much, as always, for your request. Hope you had a great 4th of July celebration. Vic wants to look, take a look at ticker symbol. Let me just close this one down. Ticker symbol O. I didn't even know there was a ticker symbol O. And uh, what is ticker symbol O? Great question. We're going to go find out momentarily. Uh, first, got to get to those charts. So give me a second to do that. Where is O? O, I think, is right here. It is. And O is, I don't know what O is. I thought it was going to come up on my other screen. But here's what it's doing. It is O, Re Realty Income Corp. Okay. So when we take a look at what it's doing on a daily time frame, you've got a consolidation with inside its profile, Vic, and that's between 51.41 and uh, 53.23 out there. On a weekly time frame, you've got a consolidation with inside its profile between 51.67 and 55.75. On the monthly chart, monthly chart says, you know what, I'd really like to see lower price out there. The reason is because price is trading below its profile support level. That was up at the 56.52 level, and it's trading below its red oscillator and change line telling us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions. However, the weekly chart yesterday, yesterday, Wednesday, and today has basically gotten back towards that support level of 51.67. So I'll change my mind and say we should see this rally up towards the 53.51, 53.23 level out there. I'll see if there's anything else I can identify in the charts We can, uh, while we're at this break. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at, uh, oh, the only other thing, Vic, that I was able to really identify may be of use to you is I've got a couple different trend lines that it's trading in between as well. Uh, that starts with the, I'll start with the lower trend line. The rising trend line starts with that swing point for back on May 29th. Your next touch point is going to be the swing point from July 1st. So you can see that trend line out there. And then from the resistance level, the trend line starting, you got this nice little flag that is forming out here. Uh, the high of uh, June the 4th, the next touch point is going going to be the trading day of uh, June 24th out there. So just really a consolidation, whether it's between profiles or those trend lines, that's what you're taking a look at. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, today was Jobs Friday, and Ed had written in yesterday asking me, is there any kind of correlation between employment topping and the markets topping? Or does one, or really a couple different things he asked, which was, uh, do they top at the same time? Does one consistently top before the other or after the other out there? So I was able to put together this set of charts out there, although I do have a, uh, I see a spelling error out there. So sorry about that. Because of I had to put these charts together manually, I have to put them when I just have a certain uh, data feed that's up, which is different than what I take a look at when we're on the show out there. And so I can't go to the actual chart, which means I can't really change that. Um, can't really change the uh, the misspelling uh, out there, but I'll, I'll identify it for you. So first, let's do this. First, let's change screen. So we're looking at the same screen out here. Uh, change windows. This is the white background screen that you're going to see out here. And I've taken this back to uh, 2000. So just let me get my cursor out there. I think it's a great question. I didn't know the answer to it, that's for sure. Whoa, what did I just, oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Shoot. Uh, there we go. Okay. Actually, I can't get my cursor because this is on a, uh, this is on a PowerPoint presentation. But at least I wrote it down. So I'm taking this back to the 2000 time frame. So back at the dot-com bubble, we had employment top first. Here's the top, as you can see in the bottom screen. So the bottom portion of the screen is the S&P 500. So if we take a look at where the S&P 500 uh, topped, it was after uh, employment. So here you got dot-com bubble, employment tops first. Then we have the uh, 2002 bottom. And the 2002 bottom, uh, the S&P 500 bottom first. Employment didn't uh, bottom until the July time frame. Uh, later in the uh, July time frame out there, we were in... Um, 
So you can you can kind of visually see it. I should have put some uh, diagonal lines on there. My apology for not doing that. Uh, but Ed, if we take a look at the 2007 top, so at the 2000 top, employment uh, top first. At the 2007 top, employment top first. I wrote down unemployment. It was thinking one thing and wrote something else out there. You can see where the top is for the S&P 500. So at this stage, you could say, oh, maybe there's a correlation, but it's only two data points. Here at the uh, 2007 real estate uh, crash out there, it was the S&P 500 that bottomed first. So in these two, the 2002.com bubble, the S&P bottomed first, the 2007 uh, bubble, it uh, bottomed before employment. Kind of makes sense out there. Now let's go to that next chart out here. And the next chart, well, what I've got is really the COVID crash. And the COVID crash out here, it was the S&P 500 that topped just a little bit before employment. Now, that makes uh, sense out there. So that's different than what we took a look at in 2000 and in 2007. The COVID crash bottom out here uh, came first. So the, the bottoms inside the S&P 500, they're telling us that they are occurring before employment starts to turn around. Sort of makes a lot of logical sense. And then as long as I was out here, now this was as of the, this was as of yesterday. I kind of worked on this chart here yesterday. First, with regard to employment and where we're at, so that none of us have to believe any of the BS that is told to us. Here what we know, and this is all taken from the, uh, uh, from the uh, FRED data source, the total U.S. employment. So each of you can take a look at this data. They actually have an interactive map that you can take a look at, but I, what I couldn't do was put the S&P 500 on top of that map and get to this uh, proper conclusion out there. So here, when we had COVID, just as the, as we had the COVID crash, employment, this is called, forget about how many millions of people, just the data is coming from there, 71.8. Uh, where are we at as of the last report, which I believe was the May report, April or May report out here, um, that was at uh, 71.87. So when people start talking about how many jobs have been created really since COVID, that's really what we should be looking at there. Actually, I thought it was pretty interesting to see the, um, and I, I just identified out here when Trump took office and what took place with regard to employment, the COVID crash. I was pretty surprised actually when I put this up here with regard to, so during Trump's era, uh, we really went from 69.65 when he took office to about 68.2. I thought it was pretty good considering we had closed you know, everything down for as long as we did out there. And then since uh, I, uh, Joe has taken office, yeah, he's been able to get that benefit, uh, which is only about 3.67. It's not 15 million or 16 million or any of the BS. But the most important thing, I think, is just to realize we're really only back to where it was that we were before COVID out there. So, Ed, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for, and thanks for the request and the question out there. The next request coming in from McGuppy. McGuppy wants to take a look at Bitcoin. So, McGuppy, for Bitcoin, I've got the July future contract. I don't trade Bitcoin. I assume that's the correct future contract. I put up uh, August, and there just wasn't much data out there. So, what is Bitcoin doing? So, here's what we know right now. It's trading below profile support, and it's trading below a breakout level. A bre oh, jeez. Yeah, see, I don't have a ton of data out here. It can't be June that's trading. Um, but the key level to be watching here is 57,370. We're in essence testing that level today. What I would say is that if price closes below that, we're likely to see an A to B equals CD pattern form to the downside. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that the swing point on this is back from May of May, um, May 3rd. Uh, and that low is 58,100. It looks to me like we might close below that. And if we do close below it, then we get an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. I'm not even going to check on volume. I don't even know if I've got volume for Bitcoin. Uh, but let's take a look at or the Bitcoin futures contract. That's what we're really taking a look at. So we take a look at this A to B equals CD pattern. Well, you're already there. So this attained the one to one. So what this tells us is that unless a bullish reversal candle were to form, this is more likely. Than, and so you can use that same scenario for the daily time frame. The first daily bullish reversal candle that you would see would generate a buy the D point for the daily time frame. What I see also on this chart for Bitcoin, if I just pull the daily back further, we can see that price is also taking out a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. Well, I saw that. Oh, it's right here. It's this one. It's this uh, trading session, this trading day from June 24th out there. See how it forms that bottom and that price never gets above that red oscillator and change line. Again, the oscillator and change line is such a key piece of, uh, of information to tell us what uh, its intent is. When you when you rally up into a red oscillator and change line, it's telling you that at that stage of the game, it's only a counter trend move out there. And that's what it's proven to be out here. So that's the best that I can provide you with data, McGuppy, for Bitcoin. I hope that that does help 
help you out, and if not, my apology to you. But you had a second request, and this one I know I can get, and that is to take a look at Mara. M A R A is a ticker symbol out there. Now you mentioned that this thing had gapped down a bit today. It it has gapped down, but all that it's doing, it's trading with inside its bear structured daily profile. And on Tuesday of uh, this week and on Wednesday of this week, price was dealing with resistance up at 2286. Now, just out of curiosity, the swing point, the prior swing point was May 22nd. 47 million shares that traded then. And uh, last on Wednesday, it was uh, 47 million shares as well there. So, uh, we're in a consolidation. We're trading below the oscillator and change line. It doesn't mean it has to move lower, but its next price target would be that swing point from June 24th. And if it closed below that low, then Mars should get down to 1741. The weekly chart, just a consolidation with inside its profiles as well. The monthly chart, really the same thing. So you got a good old fashioned consolidation. The daily is the one that's in control as we speak right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We come back from this break. We're going to look at WWJD and a gold, silver, and the uh, GDX. Oh, great. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Joe D wants to take a look at WWJD out there. That is Northern Lights Fund Trust out here. And uh, Joe D, this is bullish condition on the monthly chart because it's traded by profile on a green oscillator and change line. Bullish condition on the uh, weekly chart. Price looks like it's going to close above the top of its uh, weekly profile, 29.78. Should go target 30.33 next. And the daily time frame confirmed on Wednesday a buy the D point pattern. It confirmed that when it generated that uh, gap to the upside. Uh, our Three River Morningstar pattern, I should say, out there.
there. So you're bullish on all counts. And today, it's back inside its profile at 3010. What should unfold now is first that move to 3033 on the weekly time frame. 3052 is where you're starting to begin into daily resistance, the resistance zone between 3052 and 3069. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for your request out there. Let's finish off the show by taking gold, silver, and the GDX out there. The question from Ron is, should he add to his mining position? So here's what we know about Goldilocks. Gold on Wednesday closed above the top of its daily profile. It's traded with inside a sideways consolidation. So at this stage here, we have a profile change in trend signal that's going to take place today. What should unfold, not that I can guarantee that, Ron, but what should unfold is price should go target the top of its consolidation pattern, you know, in the 2470 type area out there. We like that right now. Price is trading above a prior bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing candle out here on a daily basis from June the 21st. So it closed above 2382. Adds the idea of that move up towards that 2470 level. The weekly chart, a nice close above that green oscillator and change line because it's inside a bullish structured profile. That green oscillator and change line is 2388.70. A close above that increases the odds of a move to 2471. I don't know. Maybe you want to see where gold closes at day's end. Silver's looking mighty fine. Silver's going to go target its uh, swing point high out there because it's gonna, it looks like it's going to close inside that candle on a weekly basis. However, if this is only a counter trend move in silver, if that's the case, you're going to find resistance right now at the uh, center of that profile, which is at 3167. So ideally, you'd love to see it close above that, too, before you add to your positions. The GDX has got an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. We're above the one to one level. Um, that's about all the information, I think, with regard to your gold positions. If it's not just the basket of the GDX, then we'd be best if we take a look at those individual stocks for you. And let's do that on Monday. Folks, stay tuned for the great programming we've got set up for you. And I'll be back with you on Monday, uh, Marvelous Monday. Have a fabulous weekend. Take care and be safe out there.